Plenty going on when it comes to energy in this country. As I mentioned, household power bills have gone up by $250, $300 on average already this year, and there's going to be plenty more pain next year. Let me borrow from Paul Murray last night to emphasise just what a big deal this is for mainstream Australia. Prices could leap another 35% next year. A minimum of 35%. Rise by 35%. Your power bill's going up 35%. Power bills will spike by more than 30%. Forecast to soar by 35%. Will rise by 35%. Power bills are going to jump by another 35%. Yeah, that is news that you can use. And tell that to Chris Bowen, because any time the Climate Change and Energy Minister pops up, his first priority is not practically saving your power bill, but delusionally saving the planet. We have eight years, 86 months, um, between now and 2030, uh, to get emissions down, because that's the key decade, uh, in terms of holding the world as close as possible to 1.5 degrees. I know you're talking about energy prices, but mm -hmm. let's not forget about... Yes. Let's not important, forget about the very important international challenge of climate change. Mate, 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 you're the climate minister in Australia. You don't run the world. You're fiddling with your 1% of global emissions. Global emissions are increasing. You are not saving the planet, mate. Cheapest. Let's bring in Paul Hislop, who consults with businesses and government on all aspects of the energy sector. He's the CEO of ACIL, ACIL Allen. And he joins me from uh, Brisbane. Thanks for joining us, Paul. Appreciate it. This transition to renewable energy, uh, is it going to see prices continue to increase or are we near the apex of this? Well, Chris, I think it depends on um, how the government's implemented um, to some extent. But I should point out that the, the recent price increases probably have very little to do with... Uh, uh, the impact of renewables, it's, it's primarily uh, coal prices which are driving uh, the current sort of increases. We've seen huge increases in coal prices since the beginning of the year. Part of it's driven by um, the war in Ukraine and the embargo of Russian coal, but a lot of it's to do with actually the increase in demand for coal uh, across the world, particularly in China and India, and um, a lot of the rest of the world is actually not uh, opening up new mines. So well, this is, this we're is starting the... to see uh, real supply pressures in the coal, coal industry. This is the argument the government likes to, to use, and there's been some sort of impact from these factors, but the point is we've shut down so much of our coal-fired generation and our gas-fired generation. That, of course, has made those, uh, those resources more expensive for the domestic side, and we need them now because all of this investment in renewables... None of it is stored. None of it, of course, is reliable. Well, yes, that's true. That's, that's, that is the big issue that we face. As we bring more renewable into the market, how do we uh, make sure the supply is stable and secure? And as we close down coal-fired power stations, which have really been the backbone of the system for the last 50 or 60 years, uh, what's going to replace it? So, I mean, the, this people is are the question. Batteries, people Can are talking we pumped hydro? They're, yeah, they're talking pumped hydro. Yeah, you know, things that take a, a lot of money, a lot of time, a lot of years to uh, to develop. Let's let's put aside New Zealand and Norway, two countries that have a lot of hydroelectricity. Can you tell me any country in the world that has delivered a dramatic shift to renewable energy as high as Australia's or higher? that hasn't ended up in an energy crisis? Uh, look, right now, um, right, right now, most of the, most of the uh, world or the developed world is, is suffering an energy crisis. Um, and part of it is to do with the fact that there has been a big shift to renewables and a shift away from uh, uh, firm generation, uh, particularly coal-fired generation and nuclear generation, uh, particularly in Europe. Uh, the one country that probably has made the big shift um, is, is China. And China has done quite a lot of renewables, but a lot of it's actually been uh, large-scale pumped hydro, uh, large-scale hydro. Yeah, they've done a lot of renewables. They've also built a lot of coal-fired power stations and still are, and they're building a lot right. more nuclear as well. So what, what's, oh, the, what's the answer I mean, here? China, Chris, China is lucky. Sorry, so just to, to sum of this sorry. up, Chris Bowen says we've gone too slowly on this, that we need to actually just build a lot more renewable and that's, that will sort it out. Isn't the issue that we've ended up with too much reliance on renewable energy now and we haven't allowed uh, that, uh, that, that dispatchable power to be replaced? 
Look, I think there is a real argument that we uh, we want to be a bit cautious about going too quickly. There's a there's a big sort of statement going on saying that uh, our renewables are cheaper and therefore if we put a lot more renewables in, um, we'll have cheaper power. But the problem is renewables are not there all the time. Uh, it's nice and cheap when you've got it, but, you know, in the middle of the night, sometimes you don't have it and you need uh, dispatchable power and uh, dispatchable power will be expensive. Yeah, thanks for joining us, Paul. We'll come back to you again on this. We'll keep on this issue because it's not going to be fixed anytime soon. Paul Hislop there in Brisbane. He's with the ACIL Allen. He's the CEO there. Uh, there you go. We rushed too hard. Uh, we're going down the renewables path. We don't have the storage and we've shut down so much dispatchable generation.